we need to go back to basics, i.e. what does a currency need to do? As I said, it needs to be a store of value and a medium of exchange. And there has to be a system which is alternative to the fractional reserve banking system. When I started researching cryptocurrencies, these were all the boxes that were getting ticked. And I thought, well, there's something here that needs to be discussed between the Islamic finance uh, experts and the cryptocurrency experts. I, I think the uh, usage of cryptocurrencies in Islamic finance is, uh, is going to be a very valid use. I, I think that there is many compatible components of uh, cryptocurrency that meet Islamic uh, sheer standards. The digital world, a mass of human activity transmitted across the planet with just the push of a button. Technically and socially, we have changed the way we communicate. Business meetings are no longer confined to the boardroom and purchases can be made from a tiny screen inside your pocket. We live in a digital world, so it's... Uh, I think the, the old-fashioned way of doing a banking system is uh, it's a way. And I th you see also today on the market that lots of banking uh, banks look on the digital industry and the cryptocurrency. So absolutely, this is here to stay. In the digital world, there needs to be a, a way for people to exchange value so that they can buy and sell things or, or, or uh, have, uh, have and receive services. So it was, it's ideal for that. I mean, you can't very well send you know, a 10 pound note by the internet to pay for something. So you, you need some way to do it. Currently, the, uh, the option that most people are using are credit cards or debit cards. But these are, are uh, payment mechanisms that were designed 40 years ago. And it's, uh, it's quite old technology. It's, uh, as I sa said, uh, as an example, you know, how many people are still walking around with a flip phone? Almost everybody has a, uh, a smartphone. So as technology progresses, so do the mechanisms that we use. And as technology has moved to digital, the requirement for digital currency became clear. In recent years, the digital boundaries have expanded to such a degree that, where once it was about how to shrink the size of a computer or mobile phone, now it's about how to use technical innovations to shake up the system that governs them. Enter the fledgling world of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is a, the currency designed to be used on the internet. And it's a, it's a virtual currency, a digital currency, that you're able to uh, send and receive payments of a value as a medium of exchange and a medium of payment. Cryptocurrency is like um, currency but is totally digital and uh, it has uh, no physical like coins or anything. It's only up in the internet. And uh, it's more like uh, behaving also like gold and silver. And uh, when we have uh, set the amount of uh, the currency, how much we're going to do, it's going to be the finite number. So if I send you a coin and you send it to someone in China and they send it to someone in America, you can actually track the DNA of that coin the serial number of that coin exactly and precisely where it is at any time. Also known as digital currency, cryptocurrency is still very much in its infancy and was born out of deep-rooted frustrations with the banking sector after the 2008 financial crash. A year later, in 2009, Bitcoin arrived and the cryptocurrency idea went viral. Bitcoin is the very first cryptocurrency and they have the first mover advantage. But in its, uh, in its design, it's really designed as an investment vehicle. In fact, many jurisdictions like the US government and, and also same here in the UK have classified uh, Bitcoin as a, a commodity or an investment vehicle and tax it as such. I'm really happy about Bitcoin and its success, how, how it came to the market and so on. And, uh, because obviously our company wouldn't be in this, this situation if it wouldn't be for Bitcoin. And uh, they were the innovators. So thank God we are not the first uh, cryptocurrency on the market. So we have, we have had uh, enough time to take all the good benefits from cryptocurrency. 
Bitcoin is the most successful example of cryptocurrency to date. It exists without any interference from regulatory bodies such as banks and governments and has a market capitalization of over $10 billion. Despite some setbacks, the average number of daily transactions is growing year on year and currently one Bitcoin is worth over 600 US dollars, approximately 500 pounds. In a London hotel next to Europe's busiest airport, Heathrow, a summit is being held to discuss this growing phenomenon. The gathering of financial leaders and experts is not about the conventional, though, by any means. It's about the alternative. How cryptocurrency can benefit Islamic finance. It came together very quickly because as soon as I started to talk to the experts, straight away they said, yeah, you're, you're onto something here and, and, you know, we need to get the right people around the table to discuss this issue and that's exactly what's happening today. It wasn't on the agenda of Islamic finance as yet. It's only been on agenda of mainly the financial markets and the Western regulators. And, but rightly, it should be considered by Islamic finance simultaneously. While the main, world, main financial world is making up their mind, we should be ready. This is what we're here to find out today. This is what we're here to get, hopefully, um, agreements and certifications that whatever cryptocurrency is about the basic fundamental rules of cryptocurrency, how it's created, how it's um, circulated, is Sharia compliant. There's no interest element on it. The question of whether cryptocurrency can be Sharia compliant is one of the main themes at the summit. According to some professionals in the industry, Islamic finance, although hugely popular in countries like Malaysia or Saudi Arabia, is being held back by a mainstream system that favours debt and interest where money is seen as a commodity. You see, money should not be dictated by politics and governments and banks. Money should have a value of its own and it should be dictated by supply and demand and it should be dictated by uh, how usable it is, as, uh, as uh, what the intrinsic value of it is, what, how it can be used as a commodity to, and a, as a form of exchange. What I have seen is that the riba issue is only applicable when this, some currency is really established. When it is established and it becomes a norm and accepted means of exchange, then the riba questions come. So at the moment, because it's not a proper currency as yet, it's just like a niche market and niche goods, the rules of riba do not apply as far as I know. I think it certainly puts something very new on the table, a new phenomenon of cryptocurrency. Um, Islamic finance, uh, at its roots, it believes that a medium of exchange in terms of money, money should be a medium of exchange and a store of value. Today we see a monetary system globally which has those functions but also whereby money is almost traded as a commodity and there's interest and debt at the heart of that system. And that system is fractional reserve banking. Fractional reserve banking is a system whereby only a small amount of actual cash makes up a bank's deposits and those banks are incentivized to hold greater reserves through a payment of interest, which of course in Islamic finance is not permissible. So many commentators have said that actually, you know, with, can Islamic banking flourish in that environment? And there's a big debate of whether it can or not. But, you know, the, the point is we have the system as it is now, we have to work within that and we have to find solutions within that system. At the summit, experts are trying to work out if cryptocurrencies can be key in the fight to help reinforce so-called ethical practices in the financial world along with the social and environmental impacts that Islamic finance seeks to address. It's never been discussed uh, uh, fully and from all different angles um, in terms of how cryptocurrency could apply to the various Islamic principles. You know, over the last few years we've, we've um, experienced all kinds of problems uh, in, in, in the economies of our countries. And, uh, and we all feel kind of at, at some point or other, we've all felt quite sort of cheated 
in, in the way that our, our money has decreased in value. So the way that I believe that um, cryptocurrency will be the way forward and is the answer to that missing jigsaw puzzle is that cryptocurrency is not based on fiat currency. There's a shared risk between the customer and the, and the, and the bank. There's, a, uh, th there's no interest based in it. There's, um, I believe that this is the way forward. There are claims that uh, cryptocurrency might be more ethical and more equitable, but these claims need to be uh, seen and worked on the, on the ground rather than just spoken about. It's just the selling point at the moment, but there is no real data and real, uh, real life uh, information about it. I think uh, it's a, the growing segment of people that are saying, you know, this is interesting, I see some benefit, but I need to learn more about it. We're at this, the point right now with cryptocurrencies where there's still uh, some education process that has to go, go on and still some refinement of the, uh, the market and, and how the cryptocurrencies are, are used. Financial transparency is also key, especially when clarifying Sharia-compliant products. So-called online ledgers of cryptocurrency transactions called blockchains are publicly available. In Bitcoin's case, however, the user's identity is hidden. So does this open up the possibility of fraud? So if I send you a coin and you send it to someone in China and they send it to someone in America, you can actually track the DNA of that coin the serial number of that coin exactly and precisely where it is at any time. So it can't be used for criminal activities, for example. You know, it can't be used for, um, uh, you know, by arms dealers and, and drugs dealers and so on so easily because it's transparent. I see that as, uh, as a, a challenge in the type of cryptocurrency uh, structure that's been set up. So Bitcoin is totally decentralized which allows somebody to come in and do these things. Some of the other cryptocurrencies out there are centralized where it's uh, controlled and, and owned by a single entity. When I started with uh, OneCoin. One of those entities is OneCoin, the only cryptocurrency present at the summit. What we have shown that for the last uh, one and a half year, we have been up and running. We have taken in about 2.2 million people. Um, this product we have created is for the mass of people, uh, so it fits my, my mother that even can't put on a TV, but I think she can use this product also. OneCoin has succeeded really good because uh, we are already in about 200 different countries and uh, we are designed for the mass market, like uh, the ordinary people. So, for example, if some billionaire would like to come uh, and participate uh, uh, in OneCoin like uh, with, with the money in front. So we are not uh, interested in, in the billionaires. Like Bitcoin, OneCoin has come under intense scrutiny, however particularly online, with some describing it as a get-rich-quick scheme serving those at the top. It may look like pyramid selling, but this is actually helping so many people to improve their quality of life. If it's giving people an income. People who invest in just a small amount of money. It's regulated by auditors every month. Um, and, and we believe that this is going to be the new reserve currency of the future. We have put in a KIC. That means that uh, know your customer service. So. At the moment, the company knows every customer that owns uh, coins in the company, every transaction that will be made in the company, we know. We can provide governments with all transactions, we can provide with where money comes from, etc. All the transactions. We don't want to be anonymous. We, we want uh, to do things correctly and uh, we don't want to be any, anything involved uh, of like illegal transactions for like uh, buying drugs or weapons or like terrorism and, uh, and therefore like uh, OneCoin is really really keen on doing the things more regulated way and uh, setting a new like trend uh, of uh, cryptocurrency. 
cautiousness, distrust and infighting in the world of cryptocurrencies is not uncommon. The challenges of growing such a new concept in a traditionalist environment are immense, with thousands of cryptocurrencies competing on a daily basis. But crucially, the industry is almost completely unregulated. Well, there's two school of thoughts on that. There is the people with the very libertarian views who absolutely insist that it should remain self-regulated and re regulated by the people. Uh, I, 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 I like that view. And I think that there's a place for that view, but I, I think that the reality of it is that there will and has to be some regulation around it. So we can all see the transaction, what is happening. So we don't need a third part to verify that uh, this money has left from your account, came to me. The blockchain is uh, using it or like verifying it and we can, we can all see it. It's like um, everybody can see it where the transaction have been made. The question of regulation, coupled with issues pertaining to transparency, is only partly concerning for Islamic finance professionals, however. Their main worries center around usability and the role cryptocurrencies will play in the long term. Yeah, my real concern is that it is, uh, has become another tool of speculations, like the Bitcoin history tells us during the last few years, the road towards cryptocurrency has been very bumpy and the value kept changing so much that it is not worth uh, considering as a currency, only as a special bond. For me, the most important thing is trade um, and facilitating trade through the medium of exchange and a store of value. A current, any currency from an Islamic perspective needs to fulfill that function, but the linkage to the real economy and to the real business of trade has to be there. The legal implications are also of similar concern. Cryptocurrencies operate without boundaries via the World Wide Web, but the chances of infringing laws that govern countries across the globe carries plenty of risk. The US is a good example. The federal government hasn't come out with anything, but you have several states already who have come out with their own individual licensing requirements or regulatory requirements for cryptocurrencies. I think it will progress to the point where the federal government in the U.S. does say something across the board. In Europe, we have almost the same laws, so, but we have a uh, different legal opinion for Germany. We have for Scandinavia, for example. Also that we have now uh, full license in uh, Vietnam, we have in Cambodia, we will have in uh, Thailand. So we need to arrange for, example in Asia, we need to arrange for every country. I think it will progress globally where there'll be uh, an overall body, whether it's uh, the World Bank or the UN or the IMF, I mean, or a new regulatory body, there'll, there'll be one that, that steps up and, and, and will monitor that. Unlike traditional currencies like the US dollar or pound, any one cryptocurrency has a finite number of coins in existence and isn't measured against other currencies. Instead, they're valued through supply and demand, particularly from goods and services. I would say that uh, uh, cryptocurrency is used mostly uh, on the internet, of course, and uh, the gaming in industry, for example, when people are playing online, so they love uh, to have cryptocurrency as a payment method. For example, in 100 different countries, uh, they are players and they can use the same currency. But cryptocurrency right now is a dwarf among giants. A lack of users is causing instability issues, leading to extremely volatile rate fluctuations, especially when exchanging to other currencies. So what's the alternative? I think that in the future, we'll see a situation uh, similar to how the IMF works, which is your cryptocurrency uh, would be tied to a basket of, uh, of currencies like the, the yen and the dollar. And, and this way, if you have a basket of you know, 10 or 15 currencies, your movements will be much, much smaller and more controllable and give you the stability that you need. Yeah, the volatility exists because the authorities and the governments have not made up their mind. And the various governments make different policies. And so it drives the whole industry into like an unregulated world. In an unregulated world, there will be always hypes. As the summit winds down, the overriding feeling is that cryptocurrency is still young, but refreshingly new in a system where bank accounts aren't accessible for everyone. 
its security, the blockchain technology, is surprisingly resilient and transparent transactions are there for all to see. When we have the social media, for example, Facebook, uh, when it started, nobody could understand that it would be such an explosion of uh, the word of mouth how Facebook grown. And uh, I think the same situation is uh, uh, with cryptocurrency today. I don't uh, think we will have uh, regular money like we have today. I think we will have digital money. Absolutely. So I think uh, what we have started will put a new standard on the money. But for all the excitement and optimism over its potential, chaotic volatility in the cryptocurrency market is frightening off merchants and a lack of regulation is testing the boundaries of trust. For Islamic finance, it may help to loosen the chains of mainstream banking, but scholars will need to be convinced. If it becomes a stable currency, not fluctuating, then I, I have an open mind about it, that it might be able to, uh, to pose as a, one of the ethical ways of doing the investment in finance, like the crowdfunding. I would say two things. One is a lot more research needs to be done to understand it thoroughly. Secondly, it only for me becomes something of interest, if you like, in a wider sense, if it becomes something that can be used when you go shopping, when you go and buy goods and services. By the end of the day, the aim is that we have some recommendations coming from the experts of a way forward in terms of Sharia compliancy of cryptocurrency and uh, what the next step is. So I'm really excited about that to see what happens next. Cryptocurrency is still in a state of growth and doesn't look like it'll slow anytime soon. But ultimately, it'll be up to the financial world to decide whether to work with it or against it.